Well, let's talk now to Zsuzsanna Zelenyi, who's a former member of Hungary's parliament. Uh, welcome to the programme. Thanks for joining us. Uh, going back particularly a few months, Hello. this looked like a closer race than it turned out to be. So what tipped things in Orban's favour and has it been Ukraine that's been the deciding issue? Well, I think that there are plenty of reasons, but probably the most important was was actually how the different parties uh, could change their narratives vis-a-vis -vis the war in Ukraine. Uh, as you know, or you should know, the, the, the media is, is overwhelmingly dominated by Orban, Orban's party. Like 80% of the Hungarian media is directly controlled by the prime minister's office and its allies. So if they have a message, it's very easy to transfer to the wide uh, 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 public. Uh, this is obviously not the case in, in case of the opposition. So when Orban uh, came up with the narrative that actually he is for peace and the opposition is for war, he even used like all people, whether one they, they want oil or blood, it re was really very rude. And this this a storytelling which was obviously a spin of the opposition's perspective was was trumpeted all over the countries for several weeks and i think that uh, this was very decisive for those ones who who changed their mind uh, in the last minute to go to vote so basically the undecided voters and since the Hungarian election system is very majoritarian, it's a winner-takes-all system, you know how it works, a couple of hundred thousand people can actually change a lot. And this is what happened in Hungary. And he now has what they call a supermajority. So what does that mean for him and for the country? Well, this is a, this is a situation we've been now for 12 years, and the supermajority is really difficult to imagine. It means that he can... He and his party in parliament can change the constitution anytime and any other law. And the Hungarian legislative uh, legal system is already full of contradiction. It's full of um, uh, very special laws which are targeted for certain companies, for certain organizations. Many of them were questioned by the European Court of, of uh, European Court, but still many were not changed. So it's, it's a very bizarre legal system and it's very personalized. So so this uh, we have to prepare that this is going to continue and and uh, the hungarian democracy is which is not a democracy any longer will be a, in a deepening crisis we've already had some criticism from viktor orban of the eu do you think his victory will send a message to it i think the european union will have to uh, face a more um, hostile viktor orban in the future uh, there are big open questions vis-a-vis -vis Orban's government. Uh, the Article 7 is uh, in, on hold. Uh, the um, conditionality of uh, EU transfers to Hungary are on hold at the moment. And uh, all these decisions were not tackled by the EU because of the election uh, campaign. They didn't want it to, to intervene, but now obviously it's time for them to do. But Orban is aware of this and, uh, and he is very ready to fight he is a big fighter he actually profiles himself as a as a street fighter or any kind of fighter so i think it will be a big big difficulty for the european union especially now that we are in war and the eu has to demonstrate its unity so there will be a leverage of orban uh, to negotiate or, or revolver the european union with certain demands and i, I i'm pretty sure he, he will do uh, this um, uh, as far as he can Juzana Zelini, thank you very much for uh, sharing your views today. Thank you for having me.